This is Dr. Vinay Sooth. First of all, what is diabetes? Person may be non-diabetic or he may be diabetic. But what's the difference between the two? Body of a healthy non-diabetic person has the ability to utilize sugar. And the blood sugar level fluctuates in this narrow safe range. And what is this narrow safe range? Now suppose if a person has a breakfast with lot of calories, his blood sugar level will rise to around 150 mg per deciliter and after some time blood sugar will begin to fall. After around 3 hours it will fall back to the fasting level and then it will continue to fluctuate around the baseline which is around 90 mg per deciliter till he eats again. If he does not eat anything for whole day, the blood sugar will not fall further thus his blood sugar will fluctuate in a narrow safe range. Now what is a diabetic person? The body of diabetic person has lost the ability to utilize sugar and fails to keep the blood sugar level within a safe range. Why did a diabetic person lose the ability to utilize sugar? And when did he lose this ability? Can he retain this lost ability again? And if so, how can he retain it back? I shall be answering this question in this video. Broadly speaking, diabetes of two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 2 diabetes is most common form of diabetes worldwide and accounts for 90 to 95 percent of the cases. In this video, I shall be restricting my discussion to type 2 diabetes. Now, how a healthy non diabetic person is able to utilize sugar and keep the blood sugar level in a safe range? Our body is made up of trillions of cells. Each cell has an insulin receptor and a glucose transport protein. Now, after meals, Carbohydrate that is starch and sugar in the meals is digested in the intestine into glucose and the glucose enters the blood. At the same time, insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas start producing insulin. Insulin binds to insulin receptor. It signals glucose transport protein that moves to the surface of the cell. Glucose enters the cell. After some time, the effect of insulin wanes away and the glucose transport protein returns back to the cell. As blood glucose level falls, Beta cells stop producing further insulin along the blood sugar level to settle at a constant of approximately 90 mg per deciliter. So in a normal person, the blood sugar level is less than 100 mg per deciliter and the insulin level is low. So if we see it hypothetically, after meals, glucose enters the blood, pancreas makes insulin. Insulin and only insulin in the world has the ability to bind to this receptor and open the door. Once it binds to the cell, the door in the cell opens up, the sugar enters the cell. After some time, the effect of insulin wanes away. In this process, three things have taken place. Firstly, body cells, they have received glucose. And the secondly, as glucose enters the cells, the level of glucose in the blood falls down. And the third is the amount of insulin in the blood is also. Now, when everything has been working smoothly, some of the body cells, they stop responding to insulin. In other words, the cells are no more sensitive to insulin or they become resistant to insulin. After meals, blood sugar enters the body, pancreas makes insulin, insulin binds to the receptors, sugar enters the normal cell but fails to enter the insulin resistant cell. In this process, glucose level remains on the higher side. So the pancreas begins to pump in more insulin so as to keep the blood sugar in the normal age. Thus, it takes more insulin to keep the blood sugar in the normal age. In this stage of insulin resistance, the level of glucose in the blood does not rise. However, the level of insulin in the blood is high. If you see it hypothetically, after meals, glucose enter blood, pancreas makes insulin, insulin binds to the receptor, but there is no effect as the receptor has become less sensitive to insulin. So pancreas makes more insulin. The cell ultimately takes up the sugar. So the insulin resistance is high, the insulin level is high in the blood. However, the blood sugar is within the normal range. In insulin resistance is the first stage when the body begins to lose its ability to utilize sugar. If the person is diagnosed as diabetic today, probably the process started about 10 to 15 years back. And the various studies have shown that the insulin resistance is the best predictor of whether or not the individual will become diabetic. These days, it is possible to diagnose insulin resistance at the early stage. Now, suppose if a person doesn't change his lifestyle, he moves on to the next stage, that's the pre-diabetic stage. In the pre-diabetic stage, over the time, more and more cells just stop responding to insulin more cells become insulin resistant. Glucose enters the normal cell, but it fails to enter the insulin resistant cells. So the glucose level remains high. So the pancreas begins to pump in more insulin to keep the blood sugar in the normal way. However, as more and more body cells become resistant, the pancreas can't keep up and the blood sugar level begins to rise. So in pre-diabetes, blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but 
not high enough to be diagnosed as diabetes. However, the insulin levels are very high. Hypothetically, in the pre-diabetic state, pancreas makes insulin, but there is no response. Pancreas makes more insulin, still there is no response. Again, the pancreas continues to make insulin, but pancreas fails to make sufficient insulin to keep the blood sugar in the normal way. So at this stage, blood sugar level begins to rise, but are not high enough to be diagnosed as diabetes. Insulin levels are very high in the glucose level also begin to rise. There are more than million beta cells in the pancreas of a normal healthy person. In an effort to secrete enough insulin to overcome their increasing insulin resistance, the beta cells increase in number, size and function. Diabetes is reversible at this stage as beta cells are functional and are producing insulin. At the pre-diabetic stage, insulin resistance begin to rise, level of insulin in the blood is high and the blood sugar is high. This is a general misconception with the pre-diabetic that uh, since they are not yet diabetic, so there is nothing to worry. However, experts are of the opinion that elevated blood insulin is worse than high blood sugar. Elevated blood insulin is known as hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia leads to low good cholesterol, high levels of triglycerides, high uric acid, chronic inflammation, obesity, narrowing the blood vessels or atherosclerosis that leads to high blood pressure, cancer and of course type 2 diabetes. Now in the pre diabetic stage, blood glucose level is high, insulin level is high. Glucose binds to the proteins or to the lipids to form advanced glycation end products. The process of glycation alters the structure and function of the proteins. Advanced glycation end products tend to accumulate in tissues and various organs. For example, they accumulate in the kidney and damage the kidney. They may accumulate in the lens of the eye and causing cataract. They get deposited in the blood vessels causing atherosclerosis. Excess glucose in the blood is converted to sorbitol. Sorbitol cannot readily leave the cell. Accumulation of this alcohol sugar within the cell can lead to osmotically driven overhydration and overhydration of the cells leads to tissue damage. Similarly, myoinositol is important for cellular energy production. The structure is very similar to glucose. Excess glucose can therefore compete with myelin stock uptake by the cell, leading to myelin stock depletion. A lot of blood sugar in the bloodstream is very damaged in the body and needs to be removed into the cell as soon as possible. There is a lot of insulin too, telling liver and the muscles to store blood sugar. Liver and muscles say that they already have excess glycogen and are not in positions to store more glucose. So liver convert the excess glucose into fat. Actually fat is useful for the body. It serves many important normal physiological functions like it's a good source of energy. Fat is a component of cell wall. Fat is useful in intra extracellular signaling. But problem is when the amount of fat in the blood is 10 times of the normal value. Body stores excess fat in abdomen as belly fat. Adipose tissue or fatty tissue is not an inert tissue. Fat cells secrete several important chemicals like cytokines. Cytokines are cell to cell signaling proteins. Cytokines made by the adipocytes. Adipocytes are basically fat cells. They are known as adipokines. Normal healthy fat secrete anti inflammatory adipokines. Whereas when there is surplus energy is present, fat cells they increase in size. This compromises the blood supply to the fat cell. Some of the fat cells die and these dead fat cells attract immune cells. Immune cells make pro-inflammatory adipokines like IL-6, tumor necrotic factor and cysteine. These pro-inflammatory cytokines circulate in the blood and damage the cell receptor causing insulin resistance further increasing the spread of the disease. So these pro-inflammatory cytokines further makes the condition worse. At this stage, the immune system is busy removing the dead cells from the fat cells. So the immune system is under a lot of stress. If you remember in COVID, the people with comorbidity and the people with a lot of belly fat had a very tough time. In the pre-diabetic age, more and more body cells are not responding to insulin. There is high blood glucose level. There is belly, excess belly fat and the ectopic fat is also there. Uh, body cells, they are not responding to insulin, so they become insulin resistant. This leads to hyperfunction of the beta cells, leading to beta cell fatigue, which leads to endoplasmic reticulum stress, leading to death of the beta cells. Similarly, high level of glucose in the blood leads to organic stress. 
uh, and production of advanced glycation in products. Organic extracts leads to recti oxygen species and uh, recti nitrogen species, leading to endoplasmic reticulum stress and mitochondrial dysfunction um, leading to beta cell death. Advanced glycation and products lead to autoimmune reactions, causing inflammation leading to beta cell death. Excess fat leads to pro-inflammatory adipokines and free fatty acid, leading to chronic inflammation, which ultimately leads to beta cell death. Chronic inflammation leads to deposition of islet amyloid polypeptides in the pancreas that also further leads to beta cell death. If the person does not change his lifestyle over the years, insulin resistance, high levels of glucose and fat continue to damage insulin producing beta cell. Gradually a stage comes when the leftover beta cells are not in position to produce sufficient insulin to keep blood sugar levels in a safe, normal, healthy range. At this stage, blood sugar begins to rise. This is stage of over diabetes. According to research, a person with type 2 diabetes may already have lost roughly 50% of the beta cells by the time they receive their diagnosis. Here, insulin resistance continues to rise. However, the insulin level begins to come down. Blood sugar and fat in the blood, they continue to rise. However, some people continue to take diabetes lightly and silently continue to lose beta cells. In the next few years, they lose a major chunk of beta cells and the stage comes when the leftover beta cells can hardly produce any insulin. At this stage, person will need injectable in insulin to keep blood sugar level in the safe range. Insulin resistance blood sugar and triglycerides or fat in blood continue to rise however the insulin level is very low. Now briefly how the disease progresses. Body of a normal healthy person with low levels of insulin can maintain blood sugar in normal healthy safe range. But when everything is working normally some cells they stop responding to insulin or in other words become resistant to insulin. Now pancreas needs to make more insulin in order to transfer glucose into the cells. But as more and more cells stop responding to insulin or in other or in other words insulin resistance is very high in spite of best effort pancreas fails to produce sufficient insulin so as to maintain blood sugar in normal healthy safe range so at this stage blood glucose level begins to rise but is not high enough to be diagnosed as diabetes here high blood sugar level is due to insulin resistance due to insulin resistance glucose fails to enter million of insulin resistant cells thus level of blood glucose remains high so insulin resistance is the male culprit for high glucose level excess glucose is converted into fat and insulin resistance high levels of glucose and fat further damage insulin producing cells and when around 50 percent of the beta cell in pancreas become non-functional person develops diabetes a person fails to stop further damage of beta cells a stage comes when he loses big chunk of beta cells at this stage he needs insulin to keep in the normal range during this period advanced glycation end products sorbitol high triglycerides high small dense ldl cholesterol particles pro-inflammatory adipokines damage vital organs like liver kidneys pancreas heart blood vessels and nerves complications due to diabetes may arise early even in the pre-diabetic stage. Now next is treating diabetes. The treatment of type 2 diabetes had undergone rapid changes in the last decade and several new drugs have been introduced in the market. The main aim of treatment is to prevent further loss of insulin producing beta cells. This can be achieved by improving insulin sensitivity, regulating glucose homeostasis, controlling diabetic dyslipidemia and these are the drugs that increase insulin sensitivity and these drugs control glucose level in the blood and diabetic dyslipidemia is being controlled by these drugs. Now about reversing diabetes. Now advanced diagnostic techniques help diagnose diabetes in the preliminary stages. So earlier you detect diabetes, lesser is the damage to vital organs, blood vessels and nerve. Easier is to reverse diabetes. In order to reverse diabetes, in addition to keeping blood sugar level in a normal healthy safe range, one need to remove the stubborn fat from belly region and from various organs. Fat from the belly region need to be reversed. Similarly, the fat from the vital organs need to be reversed. About 70% of diabetics are suffering from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Similarly, fat has to be reversed from the pancreas, heart, blood vessels, kidneys and other organs. Now, can diabetes be cured? Earlier, apoptosis has been considered as the main contributor of beta cell dysfunction and decrease in beta cell mass. Apoptosis is a type of cell death in which series of 
molecular steps in a cell lead to its death. So it was believed that beta cell loss is irreversible. However, recent studies have shown that the loss of functional beta cell mass is not due to beta cell death, but rather due to beta cell de-differentiation when the beta cells are exposed to metabolic stressors. When the beta cells are exposed to metabolic stressors, beta cells become de-differentiated to resist external injuries. They lose their differentiation characteristics and stop secreting insulin. However, removal of the damage factors can drive beta cells to undergo re-differentiation and restore its function and they start secreting insulin. Though beta cells restore their function and start secreting insulin, experts do not call it cure. But according to experts, the disease has gone into remission. This is because even while experiencing remission, Diabetes complications such as retinopathy, kidney damage, nerve damage and cardiovascular disease can happen. As of today, there is no long term evidence that checkups for complications can be safely discontinued. So therefore, those in remission should remain under medical supervision. So now with advanced diagnostic techniques and latest drugs, it is possible to put diabetes in remission. The only thing that most diabetics lack is the practice of self-control and self-discipline. You cannot beat this dreadful crippling silent killer without practice of self-control and self-discipline. Self-control and self-discipline appear to be identical thing but they are two different terms. For example, self-control means I will not eat junk food while self-discipline means I will eat vegetables. Out of self-control and self-discipline one won't do. You need to practice both to defeat this disease by practicing self-control and self-discipline under the instruction of a healthcare provider. You can prevent diabetes, control diabetes, revert diabetes and for all practical purposes cure diabetes. That's all in this video. Thank you.